Hi, welcome back to the Photoshop Training Channel. I'm Mr. Jamiris. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new frame tool in Photoshop CC 2019. This will be a comprehensive guide on the frame tool. There will be a ton of information, so make sure that you stick around until the end of the tutorial so that you don't miss a thing. If this is your first time at the Photoshop Training Channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Okay, let's get started. Photoshop CC 2019 introduces the brand new frame tool. It's the newest addition to the toolbar. You can see it here. This is a frame tool. You can select it by clicking on it or pressing K on the keyboard. The frame tool allows you to create placeholder images and you can easily replace the contents in the future. If you've ever used a frame tool in Adobe InDesign, then you're probably already familiar with the function. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you two examples so that you understand why you would want to use this tool. But before we get into that, I'm just going to start with a very basic example so that you understand how the tool works. Then we'll worry about why you want to use it. In this image, I have a blank layer, a fill layer for a background so I can change the color if I want to, and then a pixel layer and a smart object. So I'm going to disable all the layers and then just work with my background and this blank layer. Then with the frame tool selected, you can look at the options bar and decide if you're going to create a rectangular frame or an elliptical frame. Let's start with a rectangular frame. So I'll select that. Then I'm just going to click and drag in the canvas. Notice that in the layers panel, now I have a new layer type. This is a frame layer. I can tell that it's a frame layer because I can see this icon here on the bottom right that indicates that this is a frame. It's simply a square with an X on it, which looks a lot like the frame that I have here. So this frame is an image placeholder. And what that means is that I can go into my libraries panel and I can click and drag any image I want onto it. Notice that the image was automatically resized to fit the height of the frame. Notice the layers panel. There's this white focus, this white outline that is really important when working with a frame layer because you can either affect the frame, the content inside of the frame, or if I hold shift and click on both, I can adjust both at the same time. So first I'm just going to select the content, the image. If I press control T, command T to transform, I can of course move it and transform it. If I click outside the bounding box, I commit the changes. You can see the outline of the image here. If I wanted to fit the image onto the frame again, I cannot do it automatically. I have to do it by hand. So I would have to press Control T, Command T to transform and try to match it. Also, I can click on the frame. Notice a white outline on the frame. Then I can click and drag on the corner handles to adjust the shape of the frame. If I hold shift and click on the frame and then the content, the image, and press control T, command T to transform, I can scale both at the same time. Frames were designed to be used with images and smart objects. Currently, the content is a smart object, but it's actually linked to the cloud, which is why you see this icon here. I'm going to delete this frame. Then I'm going to select the elliptical frame, click and drag to create one and notice that we now have a circle. If I disable the background, enable this pixel layer, I can click and drag it onto the frame and notice that it gets placed inside of it. Also notice that this time it was not automatically resized because we brought it in from the layers panel. If I were to bring it from an external source, like the libraries panel or a file in my computer, it will resize it accordingly. So just note the difference. Also notice another thing that happened. This became a smart object, which means that we can transform it non-destructively. So I can scale it way down if I want to, and then scale it up again. And I will not get any pixelation because smart objects allow me to work non-destructively. That also means that I can double click on this smart object and it opens up in a new tab and I can make an adjustment layer like a gradient map adjustment layer and I'll change it to a different color just so that you could see. And I can close it, save it, and it gets applied onto my frame. I can also, of course, use a filter. So maybe filter 
stylized find edges. And here it is. Here's my find edges filter. And of course, I can click and drag it into the trash icon to delete it. So I'm just making it clear that it's a regular smart object inside of that frame now. Also, you can work with a smart object directly. So I have this smart object here. If I double click on it, you can see what it looks like. I have an adjustment layer. I have this layer and the background. Another way of creating a frame is by simply clicking and dragging over an image or a smart object, and that creates the frame. So frames only work with images, smart objects, not vectors, not text layers, or any other kind of layer. Also, if you don't have a frame selected and you have the frame tool selected, you can click once to select the frame, double click to select the contents. Notice the white outline, the focus. When I double clicked on it, it moved over onto the content. When the content is selected, if I double click on it again, it selects both the content and the frame and I can adjust them accordingly. Also, if I have the content selected, I can select the frame by clicking once on the outline and that selects a frame and I can adjust the frame if I need to. So this is just a basic example of how the frame tool works. So what I'm going to do now is show you a couple projects that will demonstrate how this tool works. So I'm going to go into this example. And in the old days, if you're designing a website or any type of design, sometimes the images will not be ready in time. So you might be waiting for a photographer, for a designer or somebody to create an image. So what you would do is just create a placeholder image. So in this case, I have these images as placeholders. And what you would do is delete these images and replace them with the final images when they came in. So what I'll do now is just delete this group because we don't need it. And what the frame tool is designed to do is to create those placeholder images, but then make them smart so that you could easily update the content. So I'm going to click on the rectangular option and I'm going to click and drag to make my frame. There it is. I can give it a name if I want to. And I'm just going to create all these frames. And that's all I need to do. Now, instead of deleting the frames and replace it with the final content, I can actually drag and drop the final content onto the frames. So as you saw, I can go into a libraries panel and I can click and drag an image onto a frame and adjust it accordingly. I could also from the properties panel, select a frame and use the insert image command to find an image to place onto that frame. I can select find on Adobe stock which opens up a browser on the Adobe Stock website and you can find images there. You can select Open Libraries, which simply opens the Libraries panel. You could also place from local disk, either as an embedded file or linked. Embedded files simply means that the file will be embedded into your working Photoshop document. Linked means that Photoshop will reference an external file, so it will not be embedded into the working Photoshop document. So I'll select the embedded option for this example. And in this folder, I have an image of me that I can select and click on place. And of course, I can click and drag it and adjust it accordingly, but I'm not going to waste any time for that in this example because it's not necessary. I do want to point out the other options inside of the properties panel. I also have the ability to add a stroke so I can just select the color for my stroke, then select a width and then select a placement. So either inside, center, or outside. Then we have layer comps. These are very powerful. So I'll come back to those in just a second. I'll explain commands first. Command gives us two buttons, edit contents and convert to linked. If I click on to edit contents, it just opens up my smart object and I can edit it if I need to. That's the same thing as double clicking on the smart object. Convert to linked will open the save as window so that we can save this embedded object as an external file. So to do that, I would have to give it a name so I can just call it image. The name is not important. Save it. Notice that the icon changes from smart object to a little chain icon, which means that this is now a linked object. So when I double click on it and open it, I'm opening up that external file. And now that this is a link smart object, I have a button that reads embedded. So if I click on it, it now converts it into a smart object 
inside of this document. So that's what those buttons do. So we're now going to talk about the layer comp, which is a really powerful feature. So what I'm going to do is go into file new and just click on create and I have a document and I'm just going to place several images onto this document. The images are really not that important. I just want to have three different images so that you can see how this works. So I have three images and they're covering the entire document. And again, it, the content is really not that important. So with these three images selected, I'm going to go into window layer comps. Layer comps allow you to basically create a screenshot of your layers panel. You can control the visibility of the layer, the position and layer styles, which includes blending modes. In this case, to make things very simple, we're going to create layer comps that simply control the visibility of the layers. So what I'm going to do is click on this new icon and the new layer comp window will come up and I can choose what to say visibility, position or appearance. In this case, we're only going to worry about visibility. So I'll call this layer comp alley. I'll disable the alley image and enable the image below. This next layer comp I will call cracks and this final layer comp I will call beach. Then I can save this image file, save as, and I can just call it main graphic. So I'm going to close it, go back into my working design, and I can click on the frame for this main graphic here. Then I can go into the properties panel and click on place from local disk embed and I can open that main graphics.psd file I just created and click on place and there it is. If I click on this frame then go into the properties panel you can see that in the layer comp section I have this drop down and I can select the alley cracks and beach. So I can select alley and it changes to the photo of the alley. I can select cracks and it changes into the photo of the cracks and I can select beach and it changes into the photo of the beach, obviously. So it's a very powerful feature that you can use with frames, layer comps and smart objects. In this next example, I'm going to show you how you can create frames from text and shape layers. So I have this shape layer here. If I select the direct selection tool, you can see that it's simply a shape. And if I disable this pixel layer and right click on that shape, I can select convert to frame. Give it a name if you want to and press OK. And that shape is now a frame. That means that I can go into the libraries panel and simply click and drag an image onto that frame and place that image on that frame. You can do the same thing with a text layer. So with this text layer selected, I can right click and select convert to frame give it a name if you want to and press ok and that is now a frame as well so i can select a different image drag and drop it onto that frame now to be frank with you i probably wouldn't use the text feature simply because i like flexibility and i like to work non-destructively i can't change the text if i made a typo or if my client wants me to change the text so it'll create more work so I'll show you what I like to do instead. I'm going to press Control Z several times to undo those changes. And I'm simply going to drag that same image and drop it right above that layer. Then I'm simply going to press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac to create a clipping mask. And that gives me exactly the same effect. The advantage is that I can double click on the layer and change the word to something else. And I can resize it as well, of course. So you have a little more flexibility when you're working with clipping masks and text. But using the frame feature is yet another option that Photoshop gives you to work with text and images. And there it is, the new frame tool in Photoshop CC 2019. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this tool and if you're going to use it for your designs. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the next tutorial.